Welcome to a special edition of Inside NISD. I'm Robbie Robertson, your guest host today. And we're here with Dr. Fred Hayes, Superintendent of Nacogdoches Independent School District. And we're going to talk about the Early College High School Program. Tell us a little bit about it and how you came up with this idea and what you know about it. Sure, sure. Well, well thank you. We, we uh, are beginning an implementation of an Early College High School. It, it's not a new initiative. It's something that's been around since the late 1960s. Uh, but it is an innovative program. What it allows our students to do is uh, to earn a, up to 60 hours of college credit while they're in high school. You know, we, we typically now have dual credit programs where students who are juniors and seniors take college level right, courses. Right. That, you know, that, that's been going on forever and many of our students do that. This program expands that down to our students begin taking college level courses in the ninth grade. So in the ninth grade, uh, they'll go out to SFA, they'll take college level courses, they'll take some high school level courses there. And by the time they're finished with high school, in four years, they'll have 60 hours of college credit and they'll have a high school diploma. It's an exciting program. It's really designed for first generation college students, for students from economically disadvantaged uh, backgrounds. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're expanding it to, to, to include others in, in our school uh, population or school enrollment. It's an exciting program. It's uh, something that's being successful in other parts of the, the state. I believe right now there are uh, 42 early college high schools wow. in the state of Texas. Uh, very, it, it's reaching uh, many students. Many students are being successful. The biggest, uh, of course, the biggest uh, early college high schools are in our urban areas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if you really want to look at a model program, you'd go out to El Paso and look at their program. They have a great program that's been in place for quite some time, and students are earning college credit and being very successful, even as freshmen in high school. And I think wow. that's so exciting. Uh, uh, you know, SFA is completely on board with this, had multiple meetings with them, had meetings with the provost at SFA, meetings with the dean of the School of Education, dean of other, other uh, colleges. They are extremely excited about this and ready to jump in. Well, explain a little bit about how it works. Um, I know the kids, I believe, go to um, college half a day, so they would actually go to SFA half a day and then go to the high school the other half. Is that correct? That is correct. And, and you know, something that uh, SFA is doing, they've, they've agreed to step out and to uh, host some of our classes on their campus. So our, mm -hmm. our high school students will uh, load a bus at Nacogdoches High School mm -hmm. at 7.50, right. let's just say a rough time. Mm -hmm. They'll be at SFA at 8 o'clock, they unload the bus, they take uh, a college level course, they take two of their high school level courses as freshmen, mm -hmm. they get back on the bus, they go back to Nacogdoches High School, have lunch, participate in whatever activities they do, uh, take their high school courses, the next day they start all over again. At the end of their freshman fall semester, mm -hmm. as a ninth grade freshman, they'll have three college credit hours. End, wow. of their, end of their ninth grade year, they have six college credit hours. That, that, that's an amazing wow. thing to me. So, uh, that is. But SFA is really, once again, they've stepped out there. They've made some space available for us on the campus and couldn't ask for a better partner than them. Now, how do you go about, Dr. Hayes, picking or choosing the uh, kids who are a part of it? What, what goes into that process? That's a good question. And, and you know, I, I, there are a lot more details that will be available at a later time and that I believe we'll put them on our website as far as the application process is concerned. But I think the major issue that we, we think about is how can we keep this program uh, so that it is representative of Nacogdoches ISD as a whole, mm -hmm. you know, so that it's mm -hmm. not some segregated program. Right, and right. We, we don't want that, and we're going to work diligently so that that does not occur. We want this program to be exactly representative of the student body at Nacogdoches High School. So if our student population is 40% Hispanic, 30% African American, 30% uh, white, then that's what we want our early college high school to look like. Right. So when we get those applications in, yeah, and the process is starting very soon. And once we get those application e applications into our office, we'll begin to select them so that th they represent 40, 30, 30. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it, it's well thought out. It's something that we're going to make sure that we don't have uh, some, some school that doesn't look like Nacogdoches ISD. Our intent is really to reach out and to include those students who are n uh, not typical college level, uh, college bound students. Now, how is it funded? Do the, do the students have to pay for their college hours? Do they have to, you That know, is a great question. And, and the great benefit about this is, is no, they don't. It is funded through, through Nacogdoches ISD by shifting resources. 
Uh, I'll explain that in just a little bit. Uh, well, first thing is SFA has stepped up and said, we're only going to charge you $25 per, sem uh, per semester hour for your students wow. to take a course. So That's incredible. Oh, you know, it is incredible. I mean, think about that. $75 per three hours mm -hmm. at a college level. College it's unheard of. Yeah, you yeah. can't get that anywhere else. Mm. So, um, as I said, we'll shift some resources. So, uh, our teachers who would, uh, our students who would normally have been taught by a teacher on uh, Nacogdoches High School campus, let's say in uh, uh, their, their uh, sociology class. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to be taught by faculty out at SFA. So, oh, okay. so you're, again, you're just shifting the resources from what you would normally have paid the sociolo sociology teacher to paying the college uh, credit hours out of SFA. So it's this, this completely free to our students, uh, not going to cost our taxpayers anymore, actually going to be such a great benefit for our community because we're going to have uh, students now who, who are going on to higher uh, levels in, in, their, mm -hmm. in their degrees. Uh, getting college level credit hours, it's, it's, gonna, it's just going to be amazing. For so our obviously community. you look at, like you said, the economically disadvantaged first. We do. And then you would look at other students as well, students that are not economically disadvantaged? Sure, sure. We, we want it to be, again, representative of the population in Nacogdoches okay. ISD and not all of our students are economically disadvantaged. You know, uh, now, how does the administration work with that? Uh, is there a separate principal? Is there separate counselors? Uh, do they? Okay, th there there will be administrative support out at SFA, which in the, in the form of a uh, principal, there mm -hmm. will be counselor support in the form okay. of a counselor. So, so yes, they have the full support of our school administration and of our counselor guidance staff. Okay, why now? Why does Nacogdoches ISD need this now? Obviously, it's a great program because you you've highlighted all the the fine points of it. Why has this been done before? I mean, why now? You know, I can't speak to why it hadn't been done before. I, I say why now is uh, my, really the answer that I have is why not? You know, we, mm -hmm. we should have done this quite some time ago. We should have done this in Texas quite some time ago. It's a program that we see as educators, we see as the community that benefits students, mm -hmm. that, that has a, and that will have a great impact on the economic engine and environment and culture of a community. So why aren't we doing it now? Mm -hmm. You know, part of the issue that we've got in Nacogdoches County is that even though we have uh, Stephen F. Austin State University here, the educational attainment for our county residents is below that of the state of Texas as a whole. Okay. So we have to figure out how can, how can we close that gap? How can we get the economic advantage? How can we uh, get businesses to want to move to Nacogdoches County? Mm -hmm. To how can we show them that they're going to have a high-skilled employee when they get here? Right. Uh, they're going to have an educated employee when they get here. This is one of those things that is going to have a huge impact not only on the students themselves, mm -hmm. but on the economic vitality of Nacogdoches County. Because we, I believe that when businesses look at our county and they say, you know what, their educational attainment is, is higher than the state. They're mm -hmm. going to want to move here. Now they look at it and say the educational attainment is lower than the state. I don't know. You know, there are great mm -hmm. things that happen in Nacogdoches, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm worried about the education. We're going to take that off the, pl off the plate. Educate, okay. We're, we're going to have a great uh, education, educated community here in Nacogdoches. That's awesome. I know we have about a minute and a half left, so I want you to talk a little bit about um, what's going to go into when, when they when they get when they go through high school four years they obviously they're going to go through college four years are they going to have their degree at the end of that time their college degree at the bachelor's degree at the same time they have their high school diploma it won't quite be a bachelor's degree but it'll be 60 hours and, okay. and, and uh, research is very clear you can find multiple research uh, uh, documents out there that show that once the, once the student reaches 30 college credit hours, mm -hmm. they're about two times as likely, more likely, to earn a four-year bachelor's degree than students with less than 30 college credit hours. Right. So, so okay. this really puts them out and, and, and gives them a jump start on a bachelor's degree, which is, which is again, if you look at research, a bachelor's degree is going to indicate that... Uh, for a living, you're going to make a whole lot more uh, a, a better a better living than mm -hmm. you would with less than a bachelor's degree. So it's it's a great jump start for our students. Why do you feel like more schools aren't doing this? Um, um, I feel like they will. I feel like that. that but the good thing that we have going for us is that partnership with Stephen F. Austin State University. That's right. We're right that's, here. That's a great thing. It's a seamless environment here, and it should be. 
right here on our back door. We'll be back shortly with some more information on early college high school.